What if I told you that cloud layoffs have nothing to do with performance? Some of the best engineers I know are being let go, while their colleagues are getting raises and promotions. In fact, tech giants like Microsoft are exceeding their revenue targets and experiencing strong growth in areas including cloud. Employees have worked so hard to deliver these results, so why do they cut 15,000 jobs in return? Nothing we've been told about these layoffs really seems to add up, and after speaking with dozens of engineers in big tech, I finally understand why. In this video, we're uncovering the brutal truth behind cloud layoffs, a story on corporate politics, stock market games, and the uncontrollable rise of AI. I'll also be sharing a few important skills you need to start building right away to protect your career. Now, if you're a cloud learner looking to break into tech, I know just how disheartening the current state of everything is. My goal as an ex-AWS solutions architect is to help you stay informed and use AI to your advantage, so that when it comes to your turn to land that cloud job, you can position yourself on the right side of this industry shift. With that being said, let's get into it. So what's actually happening behind closed doors at these big tech companies. According to layoffs.fyi, over 150,000 tech workers got laid off last year, and this year the number is projected to increase. Now, these layoffs aren't just random or due to performance issues. I'm sure all of us know at least one person who got laid off despite being a top performer. To help us dive deeper, I used an AI research tool called Kimi to generate an in-depth report on the cloud industry layoffs. Here's the prompt I used. Provide an in-depth analysis of cloud industry layoffs from 2024 to 2025, and it provides me with this detailed summary. Let's take a look. So right away, we can see two very interesting stats. 41% of companies expect an AI-related workforce reduction by 2030. And at the same time, AI is projected to become a $200 billion industry by 2026. This is something known as the AI paradox. Companies are cutting out traditional roles while investing more and more money into AI. Now, you might be asking, if employees are the ones making companies money, why are layoffs still happening? To understand this, we have to consider the stock market. The value of every publicly listed company is tied to the price of their shares. The higher the stock price, the more valuable the company appears. This means that everything pretty much revolves around keeping that number up. But here's the thing, investors absolutely love when companies show operational efficiency and cost discipline. In fact, when a company announces a layoff, you can see stock prices jumping up by 5-10% to on the same day. I mean, how scary is this heading? Wall Street cheers and workers fear, as layoffs overshadow earnings. Communities on Reddit are speaking up as well. One person asked, what's the real explanation behind the 15,000 layoffs at Microsoft? The top voter comment replied with this, most likely because some person's bonuses are tied to cost cutting or productivity targets that could be achieved through the layoffs. So as you can see, a lot of corporate politics at play. And here's the crazy part, many companies start hiring again within months just for the same role titles at a different salary level. So pretty much churning through the employees in hopes of a cost cut. Another strategy is that companies are eliminating entire teams and they're hiring contractors and offshore workers to do similar work for a fraction of the cost. Sometimes even training AI models to replace entire skill sets and jobs. I'm going to use the example of Microsoft again because their CEO admitted that as much as 30% of the company's code is written by AI. And in a recent interview, Mark Zuckerberg also said that he wants AI to do half of Meta's coding by 2026. And so with AI bring so much economic uncertainty, instead of waiting for another recession to hit, many companies are already cutting out their workforce. This is because it's much easier to lay off people now by blaming the market conditions rather than wait until they're in real financial trouble. Even in my own company, Zero to Cloud, at one point I had six employees and now this has decreased to two. A lot of my work as a YouTuber is also getting automated. For example, instead of spending hours doing deep research for my videos, I can now use generative AI tools to do research and analysis on my behalf, which on the bright side saves me a lot of time. All right, so given all the tech layoffs, the question on everyone's mind is who's actually protected in this new era of AI? Well, we can't really say for sure, but from what I can see, the cloud industry is splitting into two main camps, the vulnerable cloud workers and the protected value creators. If your job involves basic cloud administration, standard procedures, or just keeping the lights on, you're in the danger zone. These are exactly the types of roles that can be automated or outsourced. But if you're a value creator solving complex, high-level problems that don't yet have a straightforward solution, you're most likely safe. Let me give you an example, because even within the same role, it matters what you're actually doing. A cloud engineer setting up standard EC2 
instances and following deployment runbooks is at risk. Meanwhile, a cloud engineer designing custom multi-cloud architecture that solves a unique scaling problem will probably keep their job. Now, you might be wondering, is this still worth upskilling in cloud and AWS? My honest opinion is yes. Learning cloud is one of the best things you can do for your career. As we've discussed earlier, layoffs aren't because cloud is dying, but you do have to be strategic about which additional skills you build. The cloud market is still growing massively and is projected to reach 1.6 trillion by 2030. However, the old approach of just learning basic AWS services and memorizing concepts isn't going to get you hired anymore. Recruiters expect to see a cloud portfolio filled with hands-on projects. And ideally, those projects have some element of AI inside. If you're interested in building real cloud skills, you can check out my learning platform, Zero to Cloud. I have a whole bunch of high quality project courses at all levels to help you build your experience. Study notes, practice exams, and course roadmaps as well. There's also learning paths, depending on the cloud role you're interested in pursuing. Now, let's ask the AI another question, which I'm super curious about. Which cloud roles are expected to grow the fastest in the next one to two years, and which skills will become the most valuable? Let's see what this report says. So we can see two main roles experiencing high growth. First, there's cloud AI machine learning engineers. These are professionals building and deploying AI models on cloud platforms. Companies need people who can take AI from concept all the way to production. Next, there's cloud security engineers. The report labels this as a critical need with severe shortages across the industry, which I would agree with. As for the skills, the report breaks them down into core technical competencies and specialized skills. The first is a deep proficiency in at least one major cloud platform. I would recommend going with AWS. The next is managing infrastructure through code rather than manual processes. This is something I've spoke about in my previous videos. We also have containerization and orchestration for cloud native applications, as well as CI CD for automated software development. Let's now take a look at the specialized skills. And here's where it gets interesting. As expected, the report states that cloud security, AI ML integration, and data engineering are the three most important skills to build. These are the most future-proof, mainly due to the shortage of people who actually have those skills. All right, now that we understand the reality of these layoffs, the real question is how do you protect yourself? Well, one AI tool that has been super useful for me to understand these important industry trends and stay up to date is Kimi, who is also the sponsor of today's video. This is the interface of Kimi, and what sets it apart from other GPT style AI is the ability for it to process up to 2 million words at once. Instead of spending hours reading through dozens of lengthy reports, I can just upload everything and get a clear, structured summary in seconds. Their deep research feature is great for technical cloud professionals and developers who are excellent at coding but find researching, presenting insights, and digesting lengthy reports very time consuming. Kimi directly addresses those pain points and makes research not only less frustrating but a lot more fun. After performing deep research, Kimi can then instantly turn those insights into professional slide decks and PDFs, which comes in handy if you're preparing for interviews or pitching a side project. They've also recently launched an agent mode called OK Computer, making Kimi an all-in-one assistant for handling research, coding, data analysis and building simple applications. And so if you're trying to save time on research, prepare polished presentations, or just boost your overall productivity, make sure you check out Kimi. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Now, one skill that isn't mentioned in the report is entrepreneurship. And I believe this is one of the most important skills to have when it comes to building a career in tech. If you can combine your technical skills with business thinking, you're basically recession proof. Let me explain why. If we think back to the gold rush, the people who made the most money weren't the ones digging for gold. They were actually the ones selling shovels to the miners. Right now, we're in an AI gold rush. Everyone is trying to build AI companies, but they all need the same basic infrastructure, cloud hosting, security, deployment tools, and so on. So instead of competing with them, you can be the one selling the shovels. This could mean starting a cloud business that helps AI startups set up the infrastructure, or maybe building a SaaS tool that can automate common cloud tasks. You could even monetize your experience by starting a YouTube channel and then educating others through your unique teaching style. Pretty much what I'm doing here. My my point is, when you learn to think like an entrepreneur, layoffs sort of become irrelevant. You won't be depending on a single company for your income anymore. Instead, you'll know how to adapt quickly and spot opportunities in any market condition. All right, before we end this video, I want to share with you some immediate actions you can take. First, do an honest assessment. Is your current role something that can be automated or outsourced? If yes, you might want to start planning or pivot. Second, pick one of the three high value skills I mentioned earlier and commit to learning it over the next 90 days. Just don't try to learn everything because it won't allow you to go deep enough on a single skill. And third, start building projects that demonstrate these skills. Set up a secure cloud environment, build an MVP for your startup, or try out new AI tools. The key is to create something end-to-end -end that you can showcase on your portfolio. Okay, this brings us to the end of this video. Let me know in the comments. What are your thoughts on cloud layoffs? Thanks for watching and I'll
I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.